preparing for harvest, we will be looking at what a farmer does to go through some steps that he must take in order to get ready for the harvest season. Come on out, let's talk about and receive from the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of the Lord, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6, as I'm getting ready for Galatians 6, and you are as well, I'm going to miss you. I've never done this in 12 years. I'm literally taking two weeks off on a vacation. Amen? And uh, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll see how she goes. But um, anyway, at the end of the day, if you, if you folks, during the interim, during the two weeks, if you need something, if something happens and you need our attention, Carlos is available, Adam Daniel, let available, call the church, message, whatever you got to do, and um, I promise you, um, and if, if there's like, if something, you know, like happens that's extremely serious, I promise you, I'm still going to take phone calls and texts and all the stuff if there's an extreme situation. I'm not the kind of guy that just leaves the phone in the file for two weeks and forgets about you. Your family to me, your family to Bonnie and I, and just to, just to leave you like that, it's not, it's not an easy thing. We're coming back. <laughs> yeah, we're coming back. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll be back. So it's, it's a big deal. We love you guys dearly. Now that I'm all a mess, let's try to go to the Word of God. <laughs> Galatians 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will. I would say we will. We will reap a harvest if... We do not give up. Let us not grow weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will. Not we might, not it's a good idea or a possibility, but we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Father, we thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Father, I speak over these dear people one more time that you take your word and put it in our hearts. Father, that we would grow in this room and online, wherever folks are paying attention to this word today, as we prepare for harvest, in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Number one this morning, I believe that in our spirits, in our hearts, we ought to expect a harvest. Uh, and of course, you're going to have to forgive me because you heard a lot of farming stories over the years from me, but... Today, of course, being on the topic, you're probably <laughs> going to hear a bit more. But I remember as a lad being on the farm that harvest time was not something that may happen. Harvest time wasn't something that could happen. Harvest time wasn't an idea that if we maybe just consistently do the right things was a remote possibility. Harvest time was as sure to us on that farm as gravity was holding our feet to the terra firma. It was a sure thing. We didn't assume there was no harvest. We never assumed that, well, we'll see how it all goes. And, oh, well, look what happened. We got a harvest. And if you see what God does in the natural realm, you will also see a parallel in the spirit realm. I heard folks say not long ago, someone said to me, I don't believe God works in seasons. I said, oh, really? He made the seasons. He made the spring. He made the summer. He made the fall. He made all the four different ways. And believe you me, there are times where folks go through things in their lives. And I've gone through seasons. And some say, well, that's not very spiritual. But there are times in our lives where there are, there are things where we are planted. There are times where we will grow. And that's what the maturing process is all about in the spirit realm. But at the end of the day, is in the scope of the church, I will expect a harvest. Amen? 2 Corinthians 9 says it this way in verse 10. Now he who supplies the seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. The neat thing about this deal is God's got all the resources ready to go. Amen? 
And I've got to make up my mind that I'm going to believe without a shadow of a doubt. Say, oh, Jody, it's summertime. There's only a few folks in churches across the county. It's a quiet time. Let's just sit back and go on vacation. You're going on vacation, so we are too. And let's just sit back and let's figure all this out Labor Day weekend. No. Amen. I'm sitting down with the staff already this week with two different staff meetings talking about September and October and November and December. Looking forward because why? We are expecting harvest. Amen? I'm not going to sit back and twiddle my thumbs and it's like when I was on the farm. If, I, if, if Joe, he was my boss, if Joe said, Joe, Joe said, well, Joe, we're going we're gonna to harvest some wheat and we're going to harvest some hay and straw. And I said, yeah, we'll, we'll think about that when the time comes. Well, I wouldn't have a job for very long. All summer long, I was working for that fall season. All spring long, we was working for some season to gather in the hay. And I believe without a shadow of a doubt what the church needs right now is a spirit of expectation that says, I am expecting a harvest. Amen? I'm not hoping for harvest. I'm not thinking about harvest. We're doing harvest, and I am expecting Proverbs 3 and 9, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Why? Because I am expecting a harvest. Leviticus 26, verses 3 and 4, if you obey or if you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commandments, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield a crop and the trees their fruit. I'm going to make a pit stop there. I say, Joe, that's not a very fun scripture to make a pit stop. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commandments, back to the farm, we expected a harvest, but there's things we had to do to make that harvest happen. I had to make sure that we had the fertilizer just so on the ground. Spread manure, it stinks, but it works. <laughs> and every day get on that tractor and spread that fertilizer all across that farm, believing that God would produce the crop. But the point was, even though we expected, we had to, we could just sit back and say, well, it might rain. Well, it might happen. I don't know. Let's, let's see what takes place. No, no. We knew we had a high level of expectation, but there was things that just had to be done. What I'm saying in the church is this, is that I'm expecting harvest, but I'm not just going to sit back and say, well, Lord, you'll send them through the door and the sweep by and by. It doesn't happen that way. John Maxwell teaches leadership. He gets a class in front of him, and he gets them all to sit at their tables, at their desks, whatever they're working at, or online. He said, please spell leadership, and they're spelling L-E-A-D. And they're halfway through, and he stops them, interrupts and says, you're spelling it all wrong. It's relationship. It's relationship. And if a church wants to build a harvest and see a harvest and live in the spirit of expectation, it is not just about programs. It's not just about flashlights. It's not about how cool the mics work. It's simply this, relationships. We would go out in the spring of the year when the frost was lifted, and you know the first thing we did? We read the field. We would go into the soil, that field. We would pull samples out and send that to the lab in Fredericton, and we would read the soil. They would send us back a report and say, field A over there needs this, this, and this. Field B over here needs this, this, and this. And once we read what the field needed, we started putting it into the, sea, into the field exactly as was prescribed by the lab back in Frederick to say, Jody, what's this got to do about the harvest a lot? It's good for you and I to know what's going on in Charlotte County. 
It's good to know what's going on beyond your circle of five friends that we have coffee with once or twice a week. It's good to get past that and find out what are people saying and what are people thinking and what's going on in our region. We're reading the field and we're hearing what's going on and what's the language and what's the mindset because why? I'm expecting a harvest, but i got to work towards that harvest. Amen? And what's neat about it is this field A may get this treatment in 1999, but field A may get a different treatment the next year. You with me so far? Psalms 130, verse 5. That is why I wait expectantly, trusting God to help, for He has promised. You see, it's not willy-dilly. If I go to Leviticus and say, you know what, I'm going to follow God's decrees and be careful to follow His commandments, as long as I do what He said, there will be a crop. But I cannot just do whatever I think, whatever I want, whatever I'm comfortable with. And God says, what are you doing? I don't have nothing to do with that. This is what the field needs right here and right now. And at the end of the day, when I follow his will, I follow his way, I follow his heart, I can sit there, stand there, work there, and I can wait with full expectation, trusting God to help. You know, if you're working with someone, maybe it's a family member, a community member, whomever it may be, and you're constantly just beating them over top the head with Scripture. And then you get frustrated because they ain't coming to Jesus. And there's no one that's ever done that before or heard all that here, right? Read that person. Read that family. Get to know what's going on in the soil of their heart and start right there. Maybe all they need is a cup of coffee. All they need is a friendship. But before you can ever establish a relationship with the Word of God to someone's heart, you've got to personally establish a relationship with that person. Before they will ever trust this Word, they've got to trust your Word. Woo. And if they don't trust our Word... And I've seen this often. I know this is cornbread and beans. It may seem like a bit of an alpha course this morning. But if they sense remotely that you're only in that conversation to win that conversation and be in control of that conversation, you've lost them. I'm expecting harvest. To some people, this comes as natural as pie at a kitchen table on Thanksgiving, turkey dinner, winter, d- dinner. Just natural, comes easy to them, it's easy to go. Other people's hard work because we want so bad to get them to repent. We want so bad to get them won over. We want them so bad to be baptized that we're just shoving stuff down their throat. But all we got to say is, you know what, let's just hang out for a little bit and get to know one another. Because the whole time I'm building a relationship with them, I'm saying, Lord, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I'm I'm expecting. Because of the culture and the principles on the farm, there was never one summer nor one fall that I ever said there's a young fall. I said, I wonder if we're going to cut hay this summer. Joe would say, we're going to cut 10,000 bales of hay this summer. Let's do it. And, you know, I believed him so much, we did. It never even crossed my mind that it might not happen. I'm saying, church, is this, is that we can't just sit back and say, well, if it happens, we'll do this. If it happens, we'll do that. If this happens, we'll do this. If it ha- something happens, we'll do that. I'm saying, let's expect 10,000 bales. I'm saying, move forward and believe God and expect a harvest. God will bring stuff to you that expect, but God's not sitting back with folks that say a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands of poverty creeps in like a thief in the night. And that's not just talking about money and wealth. That's talking about the church too. Hello. Secondly, we prepared our tools. Matthew 13 and 30, let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into the barn. 
My first day on the job, I'll never forget it, I was just probably 11 or 12 years of age, is after the milking of the cows had been done, Joe presents to me a grease gun. Not a cell phone, a grease gun. <laughs> and every piece of machinery had certain amount of grease nipples that had to be memorized and you better not miss one of them because it's very important that your equipment be well maintained and our tools were prepared for the job we did not wake up on the first day to cut hay and wonder is everything in ship shape we worked hard on that. We worked hard on our skill. We worked hard on our equipment. It was washed diligently. It was greased well. If it needed a repair part, it wasn't done at the time of need. It was done before we cut the hay or turned the hay or baled the hay or brought in the wheat. What I'm saying is this. Don't sit back and wait for the opportunity to present itself to sharpen up our skills on the Word, on prayer, on worship, on fasting, on relationships, I'm loving one another, I'm forgiving, I'm working on those tools every day. Amen? Working on them every day because I believe that when we both grow together, and I've seen this happen so many times on the farm, there was a seed that grew called a mustard seed within the grass, and the roots were so deep, it would go in and kill the rest of the wheat crop, and my job as a little guy, and that, was, that stuff grew very high, and I was just a little guy at the time, and my job was to go into uh, Danny McClellan's field, and it was to pull up that mustard seed, and I'd stat that, stat that, and stat that, and they'd say, don't you miss one, because it will mess up the wheat crop, and I remember during the summertime, in the wee hours of the morning and I was just a little guy soaking wet from the dew and we stacked high on my arms like that and he would take that we'd take that to the side of the field and we would burn that so that the seed wouldn't blow back into the field you with me so far scripture tells us to do those things what I'm saying is during the time of expecting harvest I got to be really aware and mature enough to realize there's weeds and let's all face it, we've been there as little kids when mom and dad said, go weed the garden, and everything was a weed. Think of for sure this would get us out of the racket, right? Mom had this beautiful flower garden, this rock garden thingy there in front yard to me, whatever, but she loved that thing and loved flowers, still does to this day. And it was my job and Troy's job to pull the weeds. And I thought, well, if I could just pull a few more flowers along with the weeds, eventually this thing would just disappear. <laughs> it never did. Believe you me, I was matured real fast. In our spiritual journey, when I'm on my way to journey of expecting harvest, I have to be mature enough to find the weeds in my life. Search my heart, oh God. Search my heart, oh God, along this journey. Joe would say, dig up that baler. Dig out that cutter. Dig out whatever we're using. Expect that thing. Look it over. Fine tooth and comb. Get underneath of that thing. Check the air pressure. Check the blades. Check the chain. Check the timers. Check the PTO shaft. Check it all. Make sure it's just ship shape and there's anything that needs. Now's the time to deal with it. Not then. Go check out the fields. Is there anything? We'd walk those fields. We would check them out. How's the water sample? How's the pH D? How's the humidity? We were checking all these things. And if there's anything that would hold back the crop. We were on that like a hawk. Maybe there's a lesson there. If there's anything in my life that would hold back the crop, Lord, take it out of me right now. In the harder statement, if there's anything in the whole field, if there's anything in the harvesters that would hold back the crop, take it out of our way right now, Lord. Whoo. As a corporate body, it's okay. Search our hearts, oh God. If there be any wicked or selfish way in my heart, take it away, oh God, right now. And one thing I learned on the farm was this. Anybody that was a control freak or a selfish freak never lasted very long in harvest season because we didn't have time for it. I remember hiring young lads, and they were a control freak. And they wanted a runner. They lasted maybe a day or two because we didn't have time for it. We needed a team. Hello. The Lord needs a church. 
He needs the people to say, I'm expecting. And, you know, this is a hard one. It's easy to fix our lawnmowers and our tractors and our, all these things we use on the farm. But, Lord, when, when the Lord comes and says, hey, Jody, you got this control thing going on. I want you to deal with this. Hey, Jody, you got this struggle right here. I want you to deal with this. Because I got a harvest over there, but until that harvest comes, I need you to get down, and I need you to deal with this right now. Joe, do you and that person over there that you don't quite get along with that well? I want you to call them up today, invite them out for coffee and love on them. Really, Lord? Yeah, because i got a harvest coming, and I need every weed pulled out and burned. Whoo! Why? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 6. My work is to plant the seed. In your hearts, Paul says. And Apollos works was to water it. But it was God, not we, who made the garden grow in your hearts. There are some folks who are going to plant. Let them plant. Make sure the square peg is in the square hole. And make sure the round peg is in the round hole. Because some folks are just planters, and that's it. If that's all they are, leave them alone. Let them plant all day long. But then there's folks that are really good at watering. And that's a whole other series unto itself. But I learned that every plant requires a different degree of water. I've been accused too many times of putting too much water in plants around here. Drowning them. And all you green thumbs, like, I know what he's talking about. I have no clue what I'm talking about. I just know that I've been told that <laughs> some plants just need only a bit of water and others need a whole lot. That's all I do now. At the end of the day, people are the same. That's why it goes back to what I originally said. you got to know them in a relationship. How much can they handle? You put too much on them, it will drown them right out. They're, it'll scare them. It'll freak them out. That's why even in church, it's good for us to be aware of our surroundings. It's not just about me, but it's my surroundings. How much can people handle? How much can I pour on them? Hello. I know this is corn, bread, and beans, but it's the gospel truth. Because some folks are just good at planting. Some folks are good at watering. But when the two work in unison together, what happens is God gives the increase. God gives the increase. And no man, no woman, no boy or girl can walk away and say, hey, I did that. No, God says, I did that. You did your job. You planted and you watered. But believe you me, you do your part, I'll do my part, and she's going to grow. Amen? So I'm going to expect the harvest. I'm going to make sure my gear is working well. Any of you that work in the construction industry or the farming industry, and I'm looking at some of you today, and you're in both of those fields or one of those fields, you know what I'm talking about. And I remember this on the farm. We would harvest well. If you've never been on the farm, if you never worked on a farm, I'll just give you a really quick update. Harvest time is not four hours a day. It's not eight hours a day. It's more like 16, 17, 18 hours a day. I remember getting up before the sun got up, and I remember going to bed way long before the sun went to bed. And I remember the long hours and long days of just trying to get that hay in that hayloft. But I remember this as we did it well. The barns were clean. The loft was clean. How we put the hay was done exactly right. I believe not just in a little haphazard way. I believe in harvesting well. Matthew 9 and 38. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. That seems like a pretty basic scripture, but let's talk about it. Ask the Lord. When's the time you and I have asked the Lord of the harvest? Therefore, I'm just going to ask God. But check this key word out. Workers. Workers. I'm sure that everybody here I'm talking to, that wherever you work or have worked, you've got a few lazy souls hanging around. Okay. This key word called Workers. And I remember hiring some people, and Joe would say, my land, he's a worker. He can see the work. He's a worker. 
I believe God would stand over his king and says, there's a worker, 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 there's a worker. They've been praying for the Lord of the harvest to send workers. God's not interested in lazy people sitting around, twiddling their thumbs, hoping for the best. I believe we need to pray specifically that God would send out workers. Amen? Well, that's the pastor's job. I even heard this one. That's why we hired you. I've heard it all. You're the one making the big box. I've heard it all. Not at this church. It's another church. <laughs> the reality, and I'm just messing with you, right? The reality is this is that everybody has a part to play. But the bottom line is whatever part is that you do play, work it well. Don't be haphazard about it. Don't be lukewarm about it. Don't be willy-nilly about it. So you know what? I'm going to give this. If I'm playing the bass guitar today, I'm going to do the best job. Is it the perfect job? Probably not. There's a lot of better bass guitar players out there, out there than me. But I'm going to give it my best shot, and I'm going to give it my best. If I'm cleaning the floors, I'm going to clean it to the best of my ability. If whatever job, if I'm greeting folks at the front door, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. If I'm in youth, if I'm in Sunday school, if I'm in overcomers, whatever I'm doing, it's going to be done to the best of my ability. I'm not going to give it 50% or 60%. I'm giving it 100%. Why? Because I'm asking the Lord of the harvest, and I'll never forget it. We were very specific in how we put the harvest away. There's a very specific way that you put hay in a hayloft because if you don't, you burn the thing down. One bale will go this way, one bale will go that way, and you had to tuck it in. It wasn't just picking up and dropping it. It was like, oh, whatever. You had to tuck that in hard. So that no airways would be allowed between the bales. And by Jimmy the Cricket, if we found out that one of our workers was just sloppy and putting the hay any old way they want, they were gone. You must be so far. Say, man, you're sounding hard this morning, Jode. What I'm saying is this, is that I believe that God's allowing us at this present season in our lives right now, in this journey of the church, to expect to harvest and get ourselves ready and harvest extremely well. And when God entrusts us with a family or entrusts us with an individual, he expects us to treat them extremely well. That they get the Marriott treatment that they could ever deserve, that they never get up there. They thought they had a cool journey out in the world. They never felt more loved than right here. They never felt more accepted than right here. They never felt more equipped than right here. They felt never more connected than they did right here. We will harvest well. Just about done. There's so much I could share on this topic, but I'm expecting a harvest. When I harvest well, good harvesters are not selfish harvesters. Deuteronomy 24, 19, when you are harvesting in your field and you overlook a sheaf, do not go back and get it. Leave it for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow so that the Lord, your God, may bless you in all the work of your hands. You're working along and a bale falls out of the wagon. A sheaf blows away. Don't worry about going back and getting that. Leave that for the fatherless and the widows and the poor. I remember times when I was a young guy and we're harvesting towards the 10,000 bales. I remember that well and clear. But some farmer along the way, I'll never forget this as long as I lived. There was a farmer off in Stanley, and he was a dairy farmer, and he got sick and he could not harvest well. His staff could not do it well. And he was sort of MIA. And I remember him calling us and saying, Joe, I know you need every bale of hay that you can get, but can you spare a few bales because I'm and I can't do a good job and I remember three or four wagons of hay going from Parker's Ridge to Stanley because my farmer knew to harvest well you hear what I'm saying 
There's going to be people walking in our journey. And there's going to be other churches calling us up and other groups calling us up saying, can I share that resource? What if I do all that work and they go to another church and not this one? Praise be to God anyway. Amen? What if someone says, you know what, I just believe that's a better fit because it works both ways. But at the end of the day, I'm going to harvest so well that whatever happens, God gets all the glory. I promise you right now, if somebody is in need, they're going to get the help from the harvest that God has brought forth. My last scripture is the band comes back. When I harvest well, Exodus 23 and 16, celebrate the festival of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gathered in your crops from the field. There's something about celebration time. It's like a time of giving thanks and believing God for it, thanking God for it, going back to God over again and thanking Him for the harvest and celebrating it. I'll never forget that last wagon of hay that rolled in that yard. Talk about celebration time. We're dog beat tired. We're wore out. We're still all trying to get along, running on minimal hours of sleep. And that one, that last wagon rolls up to the driveway, and we grabbed that. That was back in the days where we had square bales instead of round bales. And we picked that up and put that on the conveyor belt. There goes the last one. It's done well. It could be 10 o'clock at night, but we would go in to the house. There was a big supper spread across the table. These folks were Dutch folks. They put potatoes they're just potatoes and meat kind of folks, but then they take applesauce and put it over your potatoes. You should try it sometime. Eat like kings. We celebrate. Now, my old Frank at the table, bowing his head. We're going to pray. Father, thank you one more year. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our health. And thank you for the harvest. Thank you for good workers. And thank you for keeping things going. And it wasn't very eloquent, but it was a prayer. And I want us to pray today, right now. And I want us to say thank you, Lord, for a beautiful people. Thank you, Father, for a wonderful place to gather together. Thank you we're talking to people that want to grow. Thank you for people that are showing up week after week, event after event, and expecting a harvest. Thank you for people that go beyond. They work all day, and then they step out of their jobs, and they work into the realm of the kingdom work. Donate hour upon hour just to see the kingdom of God advance in Charlotte County and Washington County. Believe in God for the best in everybody. Thank you, Father, that you put it within our hearts to see it done. Because I'm expecting a harvest. I'm not assuming. I'm not hoping for one. We're expecting. We're expecting. He put it in the hearts of those disciples from day one. He got a little sketchy at the cross. They really got freaked out by that thing. And they all scattered, but they all came back together again after the ascension, and they believed. They really, really believed that God was going to do something in their region, something in the world, even across the Roman Empire. They did not know how, they did not know when, but they surely believed in a harvest that was coming. No one told them that in advance that one of the key guys that's going to be used is absolutely one of the worst adversaries they've ever laid eyes on by the name of Saul. No one told them that in advance. 
God just did it. What I'm saying to somebody here this morning is simply this. Is that God will work in mysterious ways and His wonders will be performed. But sometimes God will bring in the most unique person and the most unique backgrounds and turn them around. And they are the key to everything happening. I've seen this over and over again. We can read the scriptures like it's a storybook. But for some reason, the craziest guy in town was the craziest guy for Jesus when it was all said and done. And a harvest, a harvest, a harvest, a harvest, a harvest. As we all stand together this morning. Father, I speak vision over this house. That if there's any hindrances whatsoever to holding us back, they be shut down right now in Jesus' name. Because we're expecting harvest. If there's any flesh, get it out of the way. If there's any selfishness, get it out of the way. If there's any lack of vision, get it out of the way. Because we're expecting harvest. Father, this fall season, September, October, November, December, we're expecting the best Sunday school we've ever had, the best youth we've ever had, not just gathered together to eat pizza, but these youngsters will come and know you. We're expecting the best church we've ever had on Sunday morning where the power of God is in this house from the very first song to the last. Amen. That during worship service, people are getting saved and healed and delivered and the expectations in the house of God. We bind the spirit of religion and apathy and lukewarmness and we put a fire and a flame within the heart of every believer saying it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Every keener is the best keener. Every encounter is the best encounter. Every overcomer is the best overcomers. Why? Because we are expecting. Give us hearts to believe. Give us hearts to believe in the harvest. Give us more faith in the local farmer that we're going to see this done. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done in Charlotte County and in Washington County. Whatever folks need, whatever churches need, whatever people need, Father, we're showing up to work. We're showing up to work. As we open up our hearts and just get ready to receive before we have prayer time, let's just begin to worship right now. So God, here is everything. Thank you so much for joining us here at St. Croix Christian Center today. We know that preparing for harvest, you have to have the right tools and the equipment to gather the harvest. But one of the biggest things is also remembering that we are to expect a harvest. Once you've done all the hard work, the scripture tells us not to be weary in doing well and doing good and not to give up because at a certain point, the harvest will come in. I want to encourage you today, and we all want to encourage you, to continue to work for the harvest. Continue to work. We also need to be mindful of praying for workers in the har harvest because the fields are ripe and they're ready. So look at the fields of your life today, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's at your school, your university, or at your home. The fields and the harvest is ready. And let's be encouraged because God has a mission for us. And so let's pray in that regard. Father, we thank you so much that we're on call and on mission with you. Help us to remember that your call on our lives is to fulfill your purpose here on this earth. So Lord, I pray for everyone who is listening in right now that they would move in faith and walk in the walk that you have called them to walk in. 
Father, I pray that you would help us to be workers in the harvest. Father, I pray that there will be workers that will be looking, Lord, to see where the field is right. And so, Lord, help us as we prepare for harvest. Help us, Lord, with the equipment and things that we need. We know that you've given us gifts and talents. And so, Lord, I pray that we would use them for the benefit of the kingdom. Lord, I pray those that are listening to this prayer right now and joining us in prayer will be encouraged and be strengthened. And so, Father, we thank you so much for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can be part of gleaning the harvest. So, Lord, we thank you so much. In your name we pray. Hey everyone, St. Croix Christian Center has another full week lined up. Stay tuned to watch and hear what's going on at St. Croix Christian Center this week. We're so excited you're part of our church family. We are changing our prayer gatherings from Tuesdays to Wednesdays during the summer months. We're seeing the hand of God move. We're seeing people saved, healed and delivered and set free. And prayer brings results. Let's come together Wednesday night. Take some time for prayer and sharing and see what God will do for you and for your church and for your community. God bless. We would love to have you join us every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook or YouTube for our weekly Word online. Overcomers Drop-In has begun. Come every Thursday evening, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Coffee, munchies while giving compassionate support. All welcome. Hope to see you there. Come to Kingdom Kids every Sunday, 10 a.m. We got food, games, and Bible lessons. Neighborhood Works will now serve meals Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 6 p.m. Come on out for a free community meal. From time to time, we have families in our community and region that need our help. Recently, we have a friend of ours by the name of Ian Mundy that is undergoing major health issues. They need our help, and here we are with an opportunity to bless them and respond. There's going to be a fundraiser on the 27th of August, but today we want to reach out and give folks an opportunity to bless this dear family, and we will make sure that um, we present them with a check for helping out in any way that we can on 27th of August at the fundraiser. So again, thank you folks for just uh, contributing and helping this family, and um, we're just believing for God's complete and divine healing in Ian's body and blessings on his family. Again, thank you so much. Come on out after church today from 12 to 2 p.m. for our Kingdom Kids Pool Party. We'll be having pizza and fun by the pool. Hey everyone, we want to start collecting monthly donations for our missionaries in the Philippines, Dale and Gwen French. Every month we'll be asking for specific items. This August we will be looking for school supplies. We would appreciate your support in this. You can drop your items off here at the church or you can contact Heather Wilcox at 467-7033. The Charlotte County Christian Academy is growing. We've had several opportunities to go and minister to them through their morning devotion program and witness their growth over and over again. Because of their growth, they need more infrastructure. Hence, they've reached out to our region for donations, for fundraising. If you would like to donate to the academy just do your normal e-transfer or the box at the back of the church and just uh, make a mention on the e-transfer or on the envelope charlotte county christian academy we will make sure that you are receded and they receive the funds god bless you and thank you for your partnership it's almost a month away ignite youth returns on wednesday september 14th at 7 p.m we just want to say a great big thank you to all of our folks that week after week volunteer their time and their skills and their efforts and resources to make things work and sustain and move forward here at St. Croix Christian Center. So God bless you as we prepare for an amazing fall season and harvest season. Let's look onward. Let's look upward. And we're believing only God's best for this fall season. So again, a great big thank you to the whole works of you and God bless you. Are you new to St. Croix Christian Center? 
If so, whether you are joining us in person or online, we would love to connect with you. Please take a moment to fill out a connect card, which can be found in the back of our chairs here in the building. After the service, be sure to drop off the completed card at the booth in the foyer and pick up your Connect gift bag. We also have an online Connect card, and you can find it online at www.sccc.online slash connect. We are looking forward to getting to know you more as we grow together in God's kingdom. Thank you for your faithful giving to this local and global vision. Here are ways you can give by mail, by e-transfer, online, or the box at the back of the church. From the northern lights to the Great Barrier Reef, our world is full of so many incredible wonders. In Wonderful, our next four-week series at Kingdom Kids, We'll explore the natural wonders of the world while learning from the book of Psalms about how all of God's creation is evidence of how wonderful our Creator is. Each week, we'll invite the kids to worship because of all the wonderful things God has done by putting their hope in God, asking for God's help, remembering what God has done, and living for God. Thank you for joining us today for Preparing for Harvest. Join us next week, August the 28th at 10 a.m. for Pastor Carlos' sermon, The Robe, the Ring, and the Roast. The story of the prodigal son reveals the spiritual significance of what God our Father does for us when we return to his loving arms. We will be in person at 444 Milltown Boulevard and online at our Facebook and YouTube channels. These ministries would not be possible without the help and generosity of all of you. We are praying and believing for an amazing week ahead. God bless.